Hello, Spanglish Generation. It's day one more time and welcome to another edition of Backstage. In fact, this is the last Backstage of the year, so I am so excited. We are going out in a big way. To film this interview, we met at one of my favorite places here in Miami. It's called Esquina de Abuela. It's a cultural urban center in Alapata, and it was the perfect setting for this chat. This is also the first backstage in English, so I really do hope you enjoy this program. Today's guest is very special to say the least. She is an artist, a model, a TV personality, a radio host, an MC, a historian. She has so many things, but most of all, a very down to earth, incredible human being whom I admire. Among her most important work is sharing the Cuban traditional culture and music to other generations and cultures through her show Cubaneando, which you can catch every single Wednesday at 7 p.m. on 88.9 here in Miami or WDNA.org worldwide. She is the Cubaneando Caribbean Queen, Emmy-nominated, award-winning communicator, Vivian Maria. Hello, Spanglish Generation. Welcome to another Backstage with Vivian Maria this time. Hi. I am so excited to have her here. You're going to love her. I met Vivian about maybe three, four years ago at an event. America, our yes. mutual friend, and her uh, uh, book launch, no? Amor en Blanco y Negro, a Love in Black and White, and I encourage you to check it out. Oh Great my God, poetry it was book. Beautiful book and amazing photography by Udai, and it was such a beautiful night that we spent together on stage, the three of us, you know, chatting about the book and everything, and really the love that was felt that night is very, very special. So I'm happy that I, we have come full circle, if you may, yes. for your wonderful show, your great channel, Spanglish Generation, which I adore and of course you know backstage thank you so much it's an honor I've been trying to interview Vivian for the past <laughs> two and a half years so I am very excited that we finally have the chance to talk we're here at Esquina de Abuela Esquina de Abuela is a very special place here in Miami this is our city we love Miami and it's uh, by Time Out magazine it's been named one of the top 10 places to visit during our Basel so yes. there's gonna be a lot going on and we're so happy that they could squeeze us in this wonderful yard that they have here full of magic full of art so we can have this special conversation it is you can feel the love you can feel the art you can feel the energy and lots of tradition too because Abuela there's a special story and those of you who come here will have an opportunity to meet Fabian and all the artists here and learn more about you know her life learn more about the great legacy that also uh, Fabian and through this magical place has been preserved here in our beautiful you know Miami in Alapata. Love it. Let's get to it Vivian. <laughs> Who is Vivian Maria? Where do you come from? Where were you born? Are you an only child? Tell us a little bit about your life. Bueno, going back, <laughs> uh, so I was, uh, my parents are Cuban, my mom is from Havana, my father is from Manzanillo in El Oriente de Cuba, so imagine that nice mix of, yes. you know, uh, all my family is Cuban, but it was 1961 and my mother moved to New York, uh, my father followed her a few months later, uh, my sister was born there several years after that and then the cold weather you know the difficulties that you know the exiles were, were experiencing during that time you know the hard moments you know yeah. the 60s imagine um, they were very very difficult times yeah. you know there were like no no blacks no dogs no Cubans and things wow. like that so all of that you know but but again it was part of being in exile a lot of Puerto, uh, a lot of Cubans were moving to the uh, Isla del Encanto, to Puerto Rico, and that's when my parents decided to move there to Puerto Rico. And years later, well, I was born in Puerto Rico. Then I had a brother who was born there, a sister, another a brother, another. So we're six in it's total. A big family. It's a big family. We're wow. a very very tight family, and I'm super happy. So I was born there. Uh, we went to school in Puerto Rico. Uh, our parents wanted us to have a, a Christian, you know, bringing and everything. So they really sacrificed a lot. Uh, that perhaps they didn't have enough money to to really even buy you know any any luxuries or anything but they wanted to be sure that we were getting the right education right. and then after that i went to university of puerto rico uh where i graduated um from public communications and arts and uh, then eventually I moved to Miami where this magical city where uh, I call it home uh, a day like today. Amazing. Yes. So you are a Boricua. Uh, yes. <laughs> you have a, a, a perfect 
tropical Caribbean mix. Yes, 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 indeed. Uh, I know my blood is very, very strong. You know, I, like I feel like the Cuban in me, but I'm super proud to have been born in the beautiful island of Puerto Rico and then being in Miami as well. So I think it opened up many, many doors for me, but also mentally, I think it, it I don't know, it just gave me a different perspective of, of life. I, in Puerto Rico is where I learned English, uh, of course, Spanish, which, which is what was spoken at home. Yeah. And then I learned French and then I followed it up with, you know, Italian. And, and Portuguese, but really my, my three main languages are Spanish, first English, and then uh, French. I love French. I know I see you post uh, quite a bit of stuff in French on social media and stuff. I was never able to learn French, mm. um, but it's a dream of mine to oh, be able to learn French. Yes, it is beautiful. It's right? a totally romantic language, yeah. and just overall, I don't know, I just, just love languages. Um, all of them I do. Absolutely. They all have a special, I guess they connect you with different cultures and right. I think that's what, part of what I love to do. Of course, of course. So Vivian, you mentioned you studied communications. Yes. Did you always have a passion for communication? I really did. I think since I was a small child, well I do have to say in school, <laughs> my parents would always be called because I would speak too much. <laughs> I imagine, me too. Me too. <laughs> you too. Yes. Es buena, pero habla mucho. Ajá, exactamente. Todo el mundo. Esa niña, right. Se vira, habla. Bueno, I guess so. <laughs> There's even a story at a, of a time that I had, got, I had to go to the hospital one time. I had a small infection. And when I was there in the hospital, my parents went to see me. And when they went to my room, they didn't find me. And it had been that I had been going to different rooms because I wanted to say hello to different people. I wanted to see how they were feeling. I wanted I to see it. how they were doing, you know. And here I am all over. I was like, I don't know, six years old. <laughs> Or something. Oh, so, <laughs> so yeah, I guess I've always had this this very very strong connection with people and yeah. the fact of the communication. And I figured, you know, when it comes to, for example, in the in the sense of music, you know, I studied music. I used to be, play bass. You know, it's really? been a while <laughs> that I haven't played bass. Nice. But I always would say, you know, music is one of my greatest passions. But I think sometimes the musicians don't have either a voice or they need someone to tell their story. Yeah, they need someone to really, you know, convey, you know, uh, maybe business wise and. I figured, you know, I think I could be that person. I know right. how a musician feels, but at the same time, I also can reach out to an audience and, again, portray just to send out that message yes. and help out that that uh, the musical history or whatever it would be. Absolutely. So, yeah, I definitely always had that passion for that, and I then was able to, of course, study that officially, you know, and, and graduate. Which is that. amazing. Yes. I guess that also ties in with you learning several languages, you know, you be, being able to communicate in different languages. Yes. You just, I mean, there, it's very evident that you have a passion for connecting with people. Yes. And that could be with your words, that could be with music, but um, you definitely do have a gift for connecting with people. And when you mentioned you played the bass, <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty impressive. That's amazing. I went through eight years of piano classes. Oh. And no, no, no. Oh, I can't play piano. I have an ear, so I play stuff by ear from time to time. Yes. But I, I was never a good, I was never disciplined enough mm. to learn an instrument. Where does your passion for Cuban music specifically begin? I have to say, and I know I always say the same, but it's not a lie, from my mom's belly. <laughs> I have no doubt about that. Well, my mother played piano, my grandmother played piano and mandolin. My grandmother used to be a, a, a music professor. Really? My grandfather played guitar, so there's a lot of music yeah. in my blood. But my mom also was an amazing dancer. She still is a great dancer. They did comparsas yeah. and all that. So I think because my mom, there would always be music in my house, and I think even when she had her belly and everything, she would be dancing yeah. so I would hear that music and I guess it was seeping through me and I was born the next thing I remember of course is growing up with my father and my mom listening to music all the time all these beautiful albums which I still uh, keep yeah. and I enjoy them uh, they were always be playing at home all this music you know right. whether it be Orquesta Aragón, Benny More, of course Celia Cruz course. Or Orquesta Riverside I mean all this old right. traditional music and that music would be heard but this is the thing the music would always play my mom would be a great dancer my mom was my father was such a, such a great dancer <laughs> but he's a great historian so I do remember hearing my dad say, 
esa canción la compuso, no. eso es un arreglo de, en la trompeta, so, in other words, my father would be like, you know, that trumpeter was, you know, the trombone solo is by Generoso Jimenez, who's also an arranger, right. who was the arranger of Benny More, and then, so all of that history, I would always hear it from home, from my father's voice, and my mother, of course, you know, having lived it, because right. they danced, they lived that in the 1950s, you know, when they were in Cuba, before right. departing. And my second mentor, I would have to say, was Cristóbal Díaz Ayala. He's one of the most important music collectors and music historians. Uh, he donated a collection of over $2 million dollars uh, worth uh, to FIU, and he continues still at 91 years old. I just saw him last week, uh, oh, had the great see. fortune, and he's like a family member to me. I was a child, and I would always listen to his programs called Cubanacan. He would always play the old traditional music and talk about the history of music. Right. So I was listening to that, and I always say, you know what, when I grow up, I would love to do a show like that where I present the traditional Cuban music, talk about the history, but I think I had something else in me that wanted to also keep moving ahead to other generations and bring new music as well. And, you know, I have to say I'm super proud that I've been able to, you know, make him proud and make my family proud because I've been able to do that for, wow, well, over 26 years uh, on the air with my programs and the right. different things that I've written and everything. So. Absolutely. I think it's very, you're a very rare find because <laughs> when you talk about historian, like you mentioned, you get that from your dad, right? Yes. The history. But that's exactly the person that we see as a historian, mm -hmm. an older man, right? And when you think about somebody who knows about old music and classic and uh, traditional music history, you almost envision, you know, uh, un abuelo, right? Una persona mayor, mm -hmm. not you. You know, we see you and you're like super fashionable, bonita, joven, energetic. And that's really not common for a young woman to be so into history. So Vivian, has it, has it been difficult for you at times with people that maybe underestimate your capacity because you are una biblioteca. <laughs> You know, el que le dio clases al otro, the one that's playing this, and you have an anecdote of something that happened between them. You just have a lot of information. Has it been difficult? Have you been a young, modern woman in this industry, dominated mainly by older men? Actually, I do have to say I've always had such great support by males, you know, since the very beginning throughout my career because mostly it's men that I've had to deal with, including musicians. Yeah. Actually, no. I mean, I have to say that because I think I've proven myself right. throughout the years. Imagine I'm being, I'm like 19, 20 years old, and here I am with an 80-year-old musician, you know, with like Cachao and Chico Farrell and uh, Mongo Santa Maria, all these, uh, you know, legendary musicians. And I, it would always be interesting, and I, I, I value very much what they would always say, like they would say to me, you know? yeah. <laughs> Qué linda, mira esta muchachita. you know, so I guess at, po at some points they would question themselves and they not understand, but at the same time they were so proud that someone of a generation that could be like a granddaughter to them um, could really be in such in love with this music, not only that, but uh, working as, you know, a radio personality or doing investigation of the music, you know, like research or writing about it. So I think they saw that in me so much that I, I have to say I've never had really any problems with that. Again, I've, I think I've proven myself throughout right. the years. Uh, I've always treated everyone with immense respect, not just for the tradition, but themselves. And I think because I come in and they all of a sudden I open up my mouth and I, I guess I have to say maybe I say something that Wow, yes. Or they might be like, ¿Cómo se llama? And, and then I'll be like, esto, that's it. You know, the other day we were talking to Cristóbal Díaz Ayala, and he was going to talk, tell us about the story of Convergencia. And here I am, he went like that, and I saw immediately that he couldn't remember something. And I go, bienvenido Julián Gutiérrez y Marcelino Berra. He's like, ah, eso es lo que me faltaba, es el nombre de ellos. And then he told us the story. So I think I've always had 
a way of it, just you know and I don't say it to impress it just of course I guess I just do it because it, it's naturally me of the, the things that I've been learning and I really love it so much that um, I guess they have seen that in me and they su they have supported me throughout the years and I'm so so happy about and it and I am glad you say that because I think that's really important to note that when you do your when you live your passion with the ultimate respect for what it is, yes. I think it comes across. Yes. I think people feel that and that's the vibe that you give off, that this is a very serious matter to yes. you and it should be taken that way. So I think it's very important that in this world we learn that how we portray ourselves is so very important in how people, you know, um, completely do what uh, you want to do. Exactly. Professionally give it your heart, but at the same time, you know, do your business and mean business exactly for real. know your worth you and know yes. and know your know your industry you know your industry very well and that is something to be respected mm -hmm. i think thank you like i think this. they know that i think they know that thank i want to go back to you mentioned your dad and you mentioned all the history of music in your family but i want you to tell the story. Uh, there's a story online about your dad. Y un famoso disco que tú tienes framed at Aww. home. And I just, I that story touched my heart. Why don't you share it with us? Oh, thank you. So it was 1962, and my father was getting ready to leave the country. In fact, you know, no one in the family knew except for his father. Mm. His mother would have been devastated to know before. Then, in fact, you know, it was very hard. He was very close to his parents, very close to el niño lindo de los abuelos, de su abuela y sus tías. So it was going to be a very hard decision to make, and, and, and he had been, you know, really working towards leaving the country. My mother was already in New York; she had departed eight months before. Uh, so really, it was uh, no no point of return. So he was going to go out, you know, for the very last time with you know his best friends, and they go into the small night club. And when they go to the club, the one that was playing there that night was Pepe Delgado, also Elena Burke was going to play that night, and um, Frank Dominguez was accompanying Elena. And th before that, there was a small combo, and this combo was this vocalist, amazing vocalist, called Regino Tellechea. It happened that his friend introduced him, and he says, Este es Regino Tellechea. Oh, very nice to meet you. He enjoyed his night very much, the last night, his last night in Cuba before maybe never ever coming back, as, as we didn't know. Um, he goes to New York uh, a few, just a few weeks after he gets there. A friend of mine gets, a friend of his gets him a job at the subway. Imagine, you know, he had, he didn't speak English. You know, he was uh, he had been used to being at home. You know, working. He worked there as an accountant, but not really. You know, eh, eh. but anyways, you know, things that you do when you arrive to a new country, and it's fine. He was there to work and and echar para adelante su familia y todo. So he had no problems with that. But of course, he starts working in the subway. He paid like a dollar fifty an hour. But he loved, loved, loved music so much. And he goes, you know, I took a break. In, oh, and say so he would be selling hamburgers and hot dogs. And he would have hamburger for breakfast, for lunch and dinner. Oh, my gosh. Because he didn't have any money or anything. La historia. La historia. La historia que ya conocemos yeah. del exilio, ¿no? Que son muy fuertes. Pero bueno, que, que you respect so much the sacrifices they've made. Anyway, so he made a dollar fifty an hour. Anyway, he, he goes, you know, let me go ahead and, and visit the music. Because he heard there was music playing one of the stores in the subway. And when he goes there, he starts going through the albums, and he, he pulls out, and he goes, ah, he pulls out the album. And what is it? El Combo Cubano de Carlos Barrevería cantando Regino Tellechea. That same singer was the one that, the last person that he saw before he left Cuba. So he told the man, first he told the man, would it be okay if you play this for me? Mm -hmm. So they play the song right there, and he was like so touched. He was like, I'm gonna buy it right now. And then he's pleased, you know, from his pocket, He's like, bueno, tres, tres dólares y pico costaba el, el disco. So imagine, you know, making a dollar fifty. So he's like, bueno, boo, he bought the album. He gets it, he brings it home. He gets to the tiny, teeny, tiny apartment that they had in Brooklyn. And he tells my mom, look, mira lo que encontré. Look what I found. The album es Regino Tellechea de Barbería. And my mom is like, wonderful, but where are we going to play it? We don't even have, we don't have a turntable. We barely have this tiny little radio. <laughs> so where are we going to play it? My dad's like, I needed to get it anyways. So to make a long story short, my father, every time he would be invited to a home that they might, you know, people who might had or not, he had his <laughs> album down here. He walk over to it. And when he would get home, he would see that they have a turntable. They'll be like, 
would it be okay if I play this album? Imagine. So years later, he brings the album, of course, when he moved to Puerto Rico, and I see the album, I know the story, I have it framed in my heart, in my uh, house. And years later, too, I write a letter. I write an actual letter to Carlos Barberia. He was living in New York. Mm -hmm. He was actually doing with his orchestra things with Celia Cruz and many other big stars. And I wrote him, and he wrote, uh, I gave him my phone number, and he calls me crying oh. because of the story. And we became amazing friends. He's passed on already, but he's a legend of Cuban music as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, he be we became great friends. We worked together for many years. I started working with him translating an anthology of Afro-Cuban music. Since the early days of her career, Vivian gained the respect and admiration of her audience, her peers, and legends of the music world. Vivian has been featured in important publications highlighting her work, and she has also contributed with her writing. Her voice has accompanied many stages through the years, she is also an accomplished television presenter and has been recognized for her communication style and her contribution to art, culture, and freedom. I asked Vivian to tell us a little bit about these important milestones in her career and what these recognitions mean to her. I imagine I am, what I'm very proud, I, I do have to say it's really an honor for me. Uh, I don't know, I guess that when it comes to TV, uh, it would be the Emmy, uh, two nominations to the Emmy Awards uh, for the work of this new program that I started doing, All That Is Jazz, uh, mostly in the world of jazz, which is another one of my great loves. Uh, a Davy Award um, that I received also for my work uh, with TV. And then when it comes to uh, radio, uh, it's really been, uh, imagine, the uh, Chico O'Farrell Lifetime Achievement Award, which has been granted to names. The first one was Chico O'Farrell himself, but everything from Tito Puente, Eddie Palmieri, uh, to big names of the uh, music industry and, and the, the film industry as well. Uh, that's from Latin Jazz USA. Uh, another award, and I'm very proud as well because my program, Cubaneando, just turned 10 years this year, and um, Cubaneando was uh, awarded the best Cuban music program by Revista Carteles, the legendary Carteles magazine. So I received the Carteles Award for that. And years ago, I received the Carteles Award for the preservation and the history of Cuban music. So really it's been, uh, again, very proud, very, very proud to know that being recognized. And again, like you said before to me, my audience, you are my best, uh, my best judges, if you may, the people that fill my heart the most. And the real award to me is knowing that I'm getting to your hearts as well. That what I'm teaching you, that the music that I'm sharing with you is fulfilling your hearts or that a musician is being recognized the way they should or that they learn something new. That's really my biggest prize. But of course, all the other ones mean so much to me because I know in the professional world, it is important, it's necessary. And again, I hope to uh, continue making everyone proud uh, with, uh, with different things as I continue achieving in my life. Vivian, that's amazing. Thank you. That's a very, very rich career, right? And I think it's very rewarding. It's rewarding to be recognized at that level because you do work hard and you do an amazing job. And I think it's very important that it does get recognition. So I am very proud as Thank a Cuban. Uh, I'm very proud of that. Thank I'm very proud that you've taken our culture to that level. So... Not everybody has done it. I mean, musicians do it their way and everybody, but this is a totally different genre that you've developed and I appreciate it. Just want to tell you from my generation, I really do appreciate Thank it. Thank you. What is something that Vivian hasn't achieved yet that you still want to do? You've shared the stage with so many legendary personalities. I mean, people that are... <laughs> They're history, you know, literally, they're just part of history. How does that feel? And what is something that you still want to fulfill? Wow. Bueno, to me, and, and, and one of the most beautiful things I would have to say is probably that these great masters of Cuban music 
sometimes they might not be Cuban, so it will be just you know amazing musicians, you know personalities like you said, uh, but like you know the names that I have mentioned before, like Achao and Candido Camero, Carlos Barberia, eh, eh, Juanito Marquez, who's still alive, and I'm actually working on a documentary uh, on his life um, and other special things that we're going to be doing for him as well. He's currently 92 years old, and we're super proud of everything that he's done and, and someone that who should not be forgotten. Uh, so to me, what, one of the things that I've loved, and of course there's one that I always adore, who also, also was like a grandfather to me, was Generoso Jimenez, the master from uh, Benny More. Hey, so man. that they all became almost like family members to me, so that we achieved that level of friendship of uh, working together, but also this beautiful respect, pero como una familiaridad muy especial, which means so much to me. Because you see the human being, and then you see this amazing musician who's a, a master, but as a human being, he's even larger. And that's the part that I wanted people to know. And usually the, 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 the best musicians or the best artists, many times they're even bigger as human beings, you know, más grande como ser humano. And that's really the part that I also wanted to people to get to know their amazing music because they have history. These are pioneers of music, but also get to know them as well. Exactly. And also for them to know that they're not forgotten. Yes. That was another very important thing that I've always wanted to do in my life. You have not been forgotten. I play your music, we feature your history, your legacy is still with us. And then I continue that tradition with the, fa the family members. So I'm very close to many of the sons and daughters or grandsons and daughters of these musicians that I'm talking about musicians who have passed on already yeah. who would be 100 years old. Yeah. And I have continued that in you know research of the music and preservation through their family that's members. Amazing. And the family really appreciate it too. Of course. So that's important, but I don't know, when it comes to things to do, I have so many passions. It's so hard to know. Yeah. It's so hard to pinpoint a few. I think my main thing would be to continue this tradition, to continue making proud my family. I do it because of my parents, because of my grandparents, because of my tradition, because of the family members of all of us. Que no se muera, que no muera esa tradición que los sacrificios de esas personas también no sean olvidados, uh, that everything that they had to endure when leaving their country was for something. Valió and la that, pena. And que valió la pena. Y que esa historia se siga contando. Que no se, que no se olvide. And those who stayed behind, that they're fighting over there to do beautiful things, yeah. that their voice is also being heard yes. through my voice, through your voice, through our voice, through many, many ways. So whether it be music and all forms of art, or whether it be any anything that will be to support what they're doing for example in the island or they're doing anywhere in the world if i can use my voice my energy my contacts my my <laughs> my heart to yes. do it i'm there to do it so there's a lot of projects so there's a lot more to a lot more vivian maria <laughs> exactly yes there's a lot to come Yes, that's there what's is. important. <laughs> Good. Good. I'm I'm really happy to hear that because I do see that you do put a lot of heart in your projects and um, you are involved not only in the radio, like you said, you're on TV, you have you're constantly doing presentations all throughout Miami. I yes. see you like every other weekend you're on a presentation <laughs> on some stage and that's amazing because that just continues giving light to, you know, this amazing voice that you have developed. Thank you. Vivian, what advice do you have for the people, young people, that want to be in the world of communications? You're on radio mostly right now. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people say, well, radio's dying out now that we have, you know, digital media. Your program is also on digital yes. form. So... What is your advice for people that want to be in communications, that dreamed of being a radio personality? I think, and, and because you know, I love all forms of you know, art, yeah. but I think the, my, the one that's the most magical for me is radio, and that's why I know that that's one thing I wanted to do since I was a little girl, and I'm happy to have been able to do it yeah. for so many years. So I would have to say, first of all, you need to have a passion and you need to have a calling for that. I have no doubt about that. Always, very education is very important. Study hard, dedicate yourself. This doesn't stop, you know, when you go to bed. <laughs> At least to me, yeah. I'm dreaming about it. I could be walking anywhere and I'm always with papers. I'm always 
asking questions. I'm always inquiring. I'm always on the internet. I'm always asking people. If I see something, I always find out about the history of it. Right. So in other words, educate yourself, prepare yourself well, be passionate about it, believe in what you do, be professional, be respectful, uh, feel that it doesn't, it never stops, always evolve, always right. evolve. So now with digital communications and the internet and all kinds of great technology that we have at hand, utilize it to your benefit, right. to bring people closer to you because we're super, you know, this takes us so far away and this also brings people far away to us. So utilize all the medium, all the media that we have at hand mm -hmm. and always reinvent yourself, always something new, always something new and believe in yourself and do it from the heart. And don't stop studying, learning, mm -hmm. investigating. You know, it, it, you never stop. You never want to, to keep that flowing. And of course, you know, I, and I, I wanted to say this, I'm thankful to God for the opportunity of doing this because really it's the chance to do this, the family, my family has been supportive, friends like you and, and listeners and, and people who love uh, me uh, have given you. So have people that are close to you that also give you that, that support. Right. And again, do it. And, and if you fail or if you feel you have failed, it doesn't matter. Get up, keep doing it. So there's not real failure. It's just a trial. It's just something, another step, another stage, another, you're climbing, you're always growing, you're always evolving, you're always changing. That's true. And that is absolutely true. And I think that's advice for anything that you have a passion for or a calling for, anything in life. So, um, Vivian, this has been a pleasure. Me too. I want you to tell people where they can find you every Wednesday. <laughs> Yes. Please let them know because they need to go check you out. I shared the story that you put that past last week that you were throwing your discos because she's very creative. You need to follow her on social media. I love your posts. Thanks. Super you. fashionable, which I love. Super stylish. And and you learn and you get entertained and you learn, you know, all these wonderful things, all these wonderful facts. But she's super entertaining and I shared the story, and one of my friends from high school, she wrote, she's like, I'm a big fan. Aww, and I was like, thank you. I love it. And we know, it, it, and, and that just, it's someone from my generation, and I just hope that you can be influencing people even younger than my generation. So yes. your work does not go unnoticed with the audience, thank and I, I really think it's important. No, and I do have to say, and, and I, because I, I, you know, I've done, years ago I did modeling, I did the Cuban Beauty's calendar, and I've done yes. other things that have to, because I've always loved fashion. I mean, you to do, me, yes. it's like, if I, if I utilize photography or, or something of myself, it's really to educate, or it's really to show a new location, but, and, and I think fashion, I've always been very, very close to fashion, but I do have to say that it's not just me, there's this partnership that I have with my better half, Willie, yes. that we're doing photography to Together. He's an amazing visual artist, yes, you know, is. multidisciplinary artist, yes. you know, as a photographer, uh, as a, again, um, visual artist overall, uh, that we do many, many things together. We're working together on this documentary, as I mentioned, of the legendary Juanito Marquez, a master of Cuban music. He's 92 years old. Right. And my hope is really for us to continue doing that and completing that for him to enjoy it in life while he's alive. Because yes. that's another thing. You want to be sure that they they know while they're alive, yes. that they're loved, that they're recognized and everything. But in Anyways, so a lot of the things that I do with photography, you know, again, Willie and I are, are together in this and, and all these other projects that we're doing together uh, that really fuel each other up yeah. because we help. And, and I'm so happy that we could be uh, an inspiration to newer generations and all kinds of generations. If we can reach, you know, to other, to all kinds of cultures and to all kinds of people that, that we've done our work. So Wednesday nights, if the program, Cubaneando with Vivian Maria, is heard live uh, on 88.9. So those of you who are in South Florida can tune in to 88.9 FM. That's the jazz station for over 40 years yes, in South is. Florida. Yes. So it's they've been doing wonderful things with jazz. And not just jazz, but everything. They do Jamaican music. They do uh, Brazilian music, world music. So really more like the voice of our community here right. in South Florida. They had Haitian music and music from Pakistan and India. So again, we have this beautiful, you know, uh, a blend of cultures yes. here and that's one of the stations you know the station that really for over 40 years has been being that voice so Wednesday nights at 7 p.m. 88.9 FM but most of us are with our phones or on our computers working so WDNA 
www.ipodcast.org. That's the website. Right. You can also find us on iTunes Radio, iHeart Radio, TuneIn Radio. And um, maybe you're in Europe and it's one in the morning and you might be sleeping, but then you wake up in the morning, you want to hear some Cuban music? Well, Mixcloud.com. You can hear the replays 24 hours a day. Awesome. So through that, you can always enjoy the music. And of course, you can find me as Vivian.Maria. Vivian with an M like in music. <laughs> Vivian Maria, send me a note. Write on my social media. Yes. Connect with me. It'll be such a pleasure to also be, maybe play a complacer una petición musical. Absolutely. I've done things like someone's, for example, uh, they're, they're driving with their parents. You know, mi mamá está conmigo. Oh. Can you play something for her? And then I surprise them with this beautiful song you know, that they haven't it. heard for 50 years so all those things are just fill my heart so just connect with me and I'll be more than happy to same thing you know reach out and, and uh, yes. just you know get to know more people of, uh, around the world of course thank you Vivian her voice is super soothing when you listen to it on the radio it's amazing and you're gonna love the show you're gonna absolutely love the show so your support to the show Cubaneando is greatly appreciated and thank you so much for watching Spanglish Generation yes. backstage with Vivian Maria from Esquina de Abuela. I love you so much, guys. Thank you, Vivian. Oh, yeah. How can I say? I am so, so emocionada. <laughs> Thank you. It's been such a pleasure to be here at this beautiful venue. Thank you, Fabian. Yeah. Of course, Dai. Uh, bueno, Willy, who's here, and, and your honey, also, yes, who's Felipe. here. He's Felipe. Ahí está siempre. <laughs> y todo lo que se encuentra aquí. They were doing beautiful art here at Esquina de Abuela. Yes. There's so much Always. great history. The, the feeling, the vibe. Uh, it's a place to definitely come and of course subscribe to Spanglish Generation if you Thank have you. not done so yet follow the great posts through Instagram through Facebook all your social media yes. y te felicito Dai de, de todo corazón because again you're an, uh, an amazing artist in all desde poetisa o poeta bueno desde poetisa poeta, <laughs> poeta, 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 poeta 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 me gusta poeta poeta escritora también the, all the great inspiration that you do motivational speaker content creator Everything that you do, really, uh, really admire you very, very much, and and I'm super proud and honored to be uh, on your show, to be part of uh, of this special place and this special place as well. Thank with you. you. So gracias, gracias, de verdad. Me encanta, gracias. <laughs> Bye, guys. So gracias. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed this interview as much as I did and make sure you support Cubaneando to help keep our culture and traditions alive. One more time, thank you Fabian from Esquina de Abuela for being so welcoming to our community and Vivian, your talent and dedication is something that we are extremely proud of. So we wish you a continued journey of complete success like you deserve. And to my Spanglish Generation viewers, Thank you so much for your support, guys. See you next time. Now is my time to shine. Let's go. When your time comes, don't postpone it. When others doubt and out, you don't condone it. Truth be told. Yourself is your toughest opponent. When your moment comes, grab hold and own it. Never let go.